Hey guys, it's your girl here, and I'm back with another video. So y'all probably like, all our videos have to do with like mom life, like hashtag mom life. Well, that's because I'm a new mom, like, oh my God. We're not new mom, I have a daughter, but I'm a new mom again, okay? Thank you for your support on my channel. If you don't support me on this channel and you would like to join the Genius family, then go ahead and subscribe down below. Make sure you hit that bell so you're notified whenever I drop new videos. So today we're gonna talk about um, must-haves and must-not-haves. <laughs> like the haves and have-nots to um, um, with your pregnancy, to motherhood, you know, whatever. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, okay? So I found that with my last pregnancy, I have a whole lot of stuff that I was selling and different things. If you follow me on my Instagram at DD Monique or on Facebook, then you know that I sell a lot of stuff, whether it be my daughter's things or just things that I've um, accumulated over time from my pregnancy with her and just buying stuff and it's, it's just been a whole lot. So. Um, like I was literally on the waiting list for like, um, like it was on back order. The Babacouche was this, um, thing that I had bought for Riley Grace and then she didn't even use it because she was so little. So I ended up selling it to one of the old styles that I, um, used to manage when I was, um, managing at JCPenney Salon. So the goes to show you, I waited and waited and waited and then after I got it, I was like, oh, I don't even need this. So yeah. Um, so some stuff, I'm just trying to save you parents, moms in general, um, because we can go ham on buying gadgets and different things that we're like, oh my God, this would be so cute. This is what I need. And then you're like, you get home and you're like, okay, I have a whole house full of stuff that I, my child is not going to be with it. Like, and this is the thing. You have one child, if you have one child, we have twins or triplets you probably will use more things. But if you have one child, your child is not gonna be in a bassinet, in a rocker, in a swing, on a four moms, on the on the four moms rocker, on another swing, in a bassinet, in a pack and play that changes into a change. Like, they're not gonna be able to even get on all of this stuff. So, just be practical when you're shopping. I know it's exciting. As your first child, I know it's almost like a wedding when people get married we go all out we buy all this stuff and then later on years later you like some people have buyer's remorse and they're like why did i not spend this money on a down payment on the house or why did i put this money in a you know for my children's college tuition like you think about those things after the fact because in the in the moment you're like excited and I want to do it big and da, da, da. it's my first child my daughter's gonna be so sweet I can't wait I gotta make sure and then you realize okay I did way too much like my daughter's closet was crazy like crazy she had sizes from preemie to like a year old in clothes like her closet was jam packed. My son's closet is not like that because I let you live and you learn. You realize, okay, these are the necessities. These are the things that he needs. And now with COVID and everything going on, he's not going to be out. I mean, I don't even think I took Riley Grace to church until she was like six months. This was before COVID. So you know I'm not going to be taking my son out with COVID being around people and all that kind of stuff i say that to say he don't need a whole bunch of clothes and shoes and outfits because he ain't gonna be going nowhere he's gonna be at home we might be out during the summertime we might go to the park and you know in the backyard and do stuff like that maybe the park um now that i think about it. um but like we can walk around the neighborhood and things like that but we're not gonna be doing a whole bunch of like going out where he has to really be like you know looking fly you know what i mean like i'm you know so he'll have like little outfits and stuff that i just want to buy him just because it's cute but as for riley grace you know she was in then she was in school and you know she was going to daycare when she was like eight weeks um to like a, a family friend of ours and she was only watching my niece and my daughter and so she had to have clothes so stuff like that i understand but now where I'm a stay-at-home mom, pretty much, and I work from home, um, I, 
I doubt if I'm gonna be spending the type of money that I spent with Holly Grace's wardrobe. And then granted, I ended up giving most of her stuff away, giving it, selling it to Once Upon a Child, which is like a consignment shop, um, which I definitely say, shop consignment if you have children or if you have first. Sometimes people are like, I ain't shopping no consignment, those clothes, eh. You can wash the clothes. I worked in retail, you'd be surprised what people do with the new clothes that you think are nice and clean at the store. Just saying. I've worked in retail the majority of my life and I'm 38 years old and the stuff people do in the fitting rooms, the stuff people try to return, that gets returned, um, you'll be surprised. So don't knock no consignment shops. Just saying. Um, I found some really good deals at consignment shops. You wash it, you bleach it, it's good as golden. Which you should be doing anyway if you're shopping anywhere else anyway. Just so I know, that's what I do, but anyway. Um, before it touches my body, my kid's body, it goes in the washing machine. Because I don't know if somebody returned it more for one night because they wanted their kids to look cute in the picture and no. Wash. But anyway, but what I'm saying, side note, y'all know if y'all watch my channel, I have a lot of side notes. I ramble on something with, I ramble on and talk about something and then I come back. That's just, you gotta follow me. You know, follow my channel, follow my conversation, <laughs> follow me when I talk. But, um, but yeah, so these are some haves and some have-nots that you need. Um, I think that you should have um, as a new mom. Okay, so um, you. <sighs> Y'all like my little bun, my little top knot today. I was feeling a little top knot ish today. It's cold as heck here in Richmond, Virginia. Like, I think it's gonna snow all week. Like, it feel like it's gonna snow all week, but anyway. Um, so, some halves. Like, I do have some of the stuff here to show you, cause some of the stuff is just like, I just feel like I should show you. But the other stuff is, um, I maybe put a link, maybe put some stuff down below on the description, like what I'm talking about, so that you can know what I'm talking about. Um, when I mention it, but I'm not gonna show everything because it's just so much stuff and I'm really not supposed to be lifting over eight pounds and so some stuff I'm just I'm not gonna show but anyway um, Some have knots. Okay, so they have these things called Hakka. They're like Hakka suction cap suction um, What am I doing? They're like little suction cups, okay? These suction cups, and they have this hole in the middle. They actually go inside of your bra, and your nipple goes inside this hole. This is so, like, for leakage. Um, like, if you're leaking, and or say you're breastfeeding, you're nursing um, your son or daughter, then the other boob may get a little excited. So, you can put this in your bra, and this will actually catch all the drop, the droppage, the leaks, the leakage, or whatever. Now, I would not suggest, like, wearing this, you know, some people wear it, like, like, if they go to the store, stuff like that. If you're going to be out for long periods of time, I would just say you need to bring your pump with you. Because this doesn't have a top on it. Okay, so, this is mainly for, like at home breastfeeding, you know, because then you have somewhere to actually put it in, whether it's a bag or a bottle, because you don't want to be, you know, out with this on because it will leak on your clothes because it doesn't have a closure. It doesn't close. So I would say, though, that's not really a have. That's not a must, must have. This is also another suction cup. I want to say this is Haka too. Um, I can't remember who this is by, but this one does have a top on it, so that's good. But then also, if you're out and about, if you are breastfeed, if you're doing breast milk, then this won't last if you're out and about over an hour because your breast milk can't sit out that long without being refrigerated. So this is a cool tool to have, and it's pretty much a suction. So it, you literally put it on your boob, and it just suction out. Um, suck it just suctions the milk that are that's already there um, now this isn't a pump so you can't use this as a pump 
it's not going to pump your milk. But if your milk is already ready to be dispensed, then this can like, it'll suck it and then it'll you'll see it start to come out. Um, so that's another way to get the milk out so you're not losing a whole bunch of milk when you start leaking or you have that droppage. Um, just like those Hakka little, um, I call, they look like little ladybugs, but Hakka little ladybugs. So just like those. Those are not, that's not a must have. I found that both of those suction things were not really must, they weren't really must haves. Um, because, I mean, then for me, they weren't really a must have. Okay. I'm just going to go, I'm just going to stop there. Um, these are nipple shields. So nipple shields are, they actually go over your nipple to protect your nipple from um, direct contact from your baby. Now, this is probably good if your nipples are not really long, if they're really short, uh, they don't protrude out enough, then this may help because then your child has something to latch onto. Um, or I feel like this may be, may be good if um, you are really concerned about like protecting your nipple from you know from bruising and things like that then that may be good I didn't particularly use these so I got some from my baby shower gifts that I actually ended up returning and just getting a gift of merchandise credit um, but you also need to make sure that you get the right measurement too because they come in different measurements um, and if you're pumping you're gonna also have to do that too. measure your nipple and the diameter and all that kind of stuff to make sure that you're getting the right breast um, pump size for your boobs. So keep that in mind. The, the nipple shields, you do have to have the size of your nipple. So of course, so it can fit your nipple, right? Um, so that's to me, wasn't a really um, must have. I have a pack and play that is like, um, it, you, you can play at the bottom, and then at the, at the top, it's like a ba half bassinet, half changing table. It was just a lot. I don't think it's necessary. Um, and I say that because I do have another changing table that's like a uh, European changing table that Greg got from Offer Up. Now this thing is really cool. Like it has a changing table at the top. You can pull it up and it has a bath inside with this little cord that drains out the water and then it has two shelves underneath where you can put pampers and everything so we end up using that way more than the pack and plate because the pack and plate was just another something it was just something else right to have and the pack and plate was nice at the bottom because you know your babies can stand in there and play um but then they also at that point they they also want to have walkers and then they'll have a sit on the floor, which is a, a walker, which everybody knows what a walker is. But, um, cause when they're at a pack and play, that's pretty much that stage where they're starting to pull up, stand up, and you know, they're gonna be transitioning to walking. So then you're gonna get a walker, right? So then they're not gonna be using the pack and play as much. Um, so I didn't use my pack and play that changed into a pack and play slash bassinet slash changing table. I didn't really use it. I think I used it with Riley Grace maybe four times. Four. I use the other European changing table. So if you don't have anything else, then pack and play situation, that three in one situation is great because it has a changing table. Wow. It has a changing table. Excuse me, guys. It has a changing table, um, the bassinet, and the um the the play area so it has that it's like a three in one i don't know if you've seen that but they do have it and it's pretty cool um but if you don't have something else that you can use as change table some people just change their babies on the on the sofa on their lap like you don't really that's what i'm trying to say like you don't really have to have so many things that you think you have to have because guess what you don't need to have space in your house for just you side note that's what also frustrates moms. I know it will frustrate, it frustrated me because you have so much stuff for the baby that you don't even feel like you can like, ex you can like operate in your own house. Like you just have 
car seats, and then you have bassinets, and then you have changing tables, and then you have diapers and play toys, and that you need to have like I feel like having minimal, being a minimalist in this area will just help with the stress and anxiety too, because it's just so much stuff that you have to continue to keep organized, right? So if you're that person that can like, you know what, I'm gonna change my baby on my lap or on the, on the couch, we're gonna put down a changing pad and I'm not gonna have all these other things, then I think, I don't feel like that's a bad idea. You know, I feel like you can do that. Like instead of having, spending all this money on all these other gadgets that you probably won't even use them that much because you're probably gonna then be transitioning them into their own room and then in their room, most dressers come with a changing table on top of them. So you're gonna be changing them up there. So it's just a lot, but I just didn't think that the pack and play three in one thing that I had worked. Um, so that, that's, that was what I didn't think I needed. Um, I had a rocker and I had like a swing and uh, like a four moms, um, the little, um, I can't remember the name of it, mm. but it's the four moms um, glider. Now I had that, then I had another little um, um, glider that just vibrated. I had that, um, what else did I have? I had the babacouche. So I had a lot of stuff. And literally with Riley Grace, I used maybe one of them two times. That's what I'm saying, guys. Sometimes, look, at the end of the day, your baby, what they want, to be dry, clean pamper, to be fed, to be cuddled. That's all they need. All the other stuff is mainly for us. <laughs> It's just mainly for us. It's mainly for us to be, to have, to feel like we're doing things that pe things are kind of, things are going to be easy for us to main to maintain, easy for us to change, them, easy for us to do this. A lot of that stuff is for us, but it's not really for the baby. The baby don't need all that stuff, right? So that was like, um, I feel like you do need some type of swing or some type of something that you can put your baby in whether it's a four moms a baby couche a rocker a swing something that's going to soothe your baby so they can sit in something and you don't have to hold them all the time i think that is still that's a must have that's a have to have something like that but you don't need to have so many of them just get one one situation whether it's a four moms whether it's just a little swing turn on whatever it is just just get one just get one. If this is your second child, you shouldn't be buying a whole bunch of stuff anyway. I'm just saying, boo boo. Like, I'm pretty sure you went overboard with your first one. You have things to roll over. Like, once you have more than one child, you should have things that you can repurpose from the first one. Um, but yeah. So those are some. Let me look at my list because I wrote a list down for y'all because I was like, let me make sure I don't forget anything. That's like I have not. Um. Yeah, so those things you don't really need to have. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, big old teddy bears and stuff like that. Those are great, but they're very um, germ heavy, right? Because you can never, you can never really clean a big teddy bear from a store really well. Uh, you just can't. Like you can spray them down and lights on them down, um, but I just shied away from that just because just because of the germ factor. Um, things you need to have. Okay, so you definitely need to have a boppy. Everybody knows what a boppy is. If you don't know, a boppy is a pillow that goes around almost to the to complete circle and it goes around your waist and it gives a place for you to rest your arm and your baby while you're breastfeeding. I say that you need, if you have an upstairs and downstairs house, um, I would say have two. So you can have one upstairs and one downstairs because you never know where you're going to be nursing your baby, where you're going to have to give your baby a bottle, right? So if you're downstairs it's during the daytime, then you got to run downstairs and get the boppy, and then bring it upstairs, and then remember to take the one from upstairs, take it downstairs. So your girl bought 
I just bought two. I just had to buy two because I was like, I can have one upstairs and have one downstairs and I'm good to go. So I don't have to keep bringing it up and down and remembering it was just getting on my nerves. Um, because I nurse him upstairs when it's time to go to bed, I might nurse him. So I need to have one upstairs for that. And then when I'm downstairs all the time and I'm feeding him or my husband's feeding him, it's just, it's just easier. So have one boppy, but two would probably be what's best for you. Um, the boppy lounger. Now the boppy lounger is almost like a, um, the boppy connects, the ends connect, and it's almost like a bed for them. So it's so, so, so cute. Um, because the lounger, you can actually put that inside like their bassinet and use that to really help them snug. Like it has like a little cushion around it so they're able to like feel really nice and tight almost like a docka top but not as expensive because it's not as big as a docka top um it's a little bit smaller than a docka top but my son loves it like he sleeps like a champ in that little thing like it's really good that is the bobby lounger so you have a bobby and you have a bobby lounger so those are two halves i think you should definitely have because the Bobby Lodge Lawn Lounger, the Bobby Lounger, you can put you know anywhere. You can just pick it up and put it anywhere. You don't have to have like a big bulky bassinet or anything like that. Pack and play that can literally be what they lay in when they're like a newborn. Um, what else? What else did I say? It was a must have a white warmer. White warmers are saving grace because when you have wipes, they're cold and your baby likes to be warm. So that will help them to not fuss as much by having a wipe warmer that you can put your wipes in to keep them warm so when you clean their booty, they're not like, whoo, a shock factor. Like, how would you feel being white with something freezing cold? So wipe warmer, I have two of those two, one for downstairs and during the day, and then I have one that will be this upstairs now in our room, but it'll be in his room once he transitions to his room. So white warmers. Um, bottle warmer, have a bottle warmer. Bottle warmers are really good. They have settings up there to make for breast breast milk for if you're coming, if the milk is coming straight out, the, out of cold, out of the um, refrigerator. Um, if you want quick warm, bottle warmer. Very, very good to have a bottle warmer. Then you're not like trying to test it on your hand, you know, putting it in the cup and it's too hot, like, bottle warmer. Um, what else? A mobile bottle warmer if you're breastfeeding. Because, you know, when you're breastfeeding, you don't have a way to warm your milk if you're out and about, if you're not gonna put them on the boob. So if you have a bottle and you breast pump, if you breast pump, and if you've already pumped your milk and you just want to put it in a bottle and have it on you, you can't feed your baby with just cold milk. So a bottle warmer that you can plug up in your car is very, very good to have. Like that is a must if you're doing breast milk. Um, swaddle wraps. Make sure you have some swaddles. Usually everybody has a traditional um, blanket from the hospital, the white one with the blue lines. Grab those when you leave the hospital. Like I told y'all in my other video, get everything that you can because your insurance is paying for most of it. Um, yes, so take some of those blankets and use those as your swaddles um, if you don't have any swaddles that you're buying. Like muslin material is really good because it's really soft. It wraps really good. And then also watch the people at the hospital. Watch the nurses when they swaddle so you know how to do it when it's your turn. Okay? So you need some swaddle wraps. Um, what else? A good nursing bra. Now, I do have the nursing bra that I have. Now, I have been searching for a good nursing bra because I had one, I've had, I have three um, from my previous pregnancy, from motherhood, maternity. But I was like, oh, you know, I, yeah, but anyway. So I researched and researched and researched, and this company was on like every. Um, website when I looked up like um, best nursing bras this one was on everybody's list so it's called simple wishes okay and it comes in this cute little bag it's so cute it comes in this little bag like this 
and But anyway, um, it comes in a cute little bag, and this is the um, the Super Mom bra. So this one actually is let's see, it is a maternity bra, a nursing bra, and a bra for pumping. So. It's a regular maternity bra that you just wear, and then it also has the capability to, to fold all the way down like a regular nursing bra, and then it also has the capability of holding your um, breast pump inside the bra so that your hands are free. So super, super cool. Um, it also it has this card in here, which I don't know if y'all can see it. Yeah, I, can, I, I can't even see it, so I know y'all can't see it. Um, yeah. Okay, here you go. I think that's better. Maybe. Anyway. But anyway, it has this card and it shows you like how to do everything. But it was so cute. Now, this bra, um, so how it works is so, and it's so comfortable, guys. Like, it feels so good and it has like little legs so it's like really cute sorry for the men that watch my channel this is not for you um but this first part it just slides out and then this little hole right here is where you put your pump let me see if i can pull it out it's so cute see this little hole right here so that's where your pump goes through and then it has the regular the regular snaps um, that most traditional um, most traditional um, nursing bras have that just snaps and the whole thing comes down so you can you can nurse regular. But it was so nice. So the website is really good because you have to know your bra size, right? So you need to know your bra size. But on their website, they have a questionnaire that you have to measure. So with simple wishes. You have to either buy a. You need to have measuring tape. So make sure you have some measuring tape when you're when you're doing this. Trying to when you're trying to find your breast size. If you don't already know, um, but if you are pregnant now, you are gonna your boobs are gonna get bigger. So usually they tell you to go up a couple of sizes because. You're going to be bigger anyway because your boobs are going to get bigger. But then once you get engorged, they're going to really be big. So just make sure that you go up a few sizes so your bra is comfortable at all times. Um, but they are going to, you're going to have to do your measurements. And then that's how they're going to, they figure out what size you need. And it was perfectly accurate because it's the size that I am. Um, I'm a 40 double D. And so it fits so perfect and so comfortable. Like, I love it. So Simple Wishes, make sure you go online, look at their website. They have really pretty colors. They have tank tops and all kinds of things, but I just really just needed two more nursing bras. So I got two bras and they were only like $24.99. So they were not really expensive. And um, unlike my motherhood ones, they were pretty pretty pricey. Like I spent a good, a good amount of money for those. Um, Cause I got regular bras and then like a sports bra kind of one. I got two. I got nude and black from motherhood, and then I got a sports bra one. So check out simplywishes.com, they were awesome. So those are some things that I would say that you really need to have, like pampers, wipes, some onesies, some sleepers. Um, you know, those are definitely must-haves too. Um, and then along with the other things that I mentioned, and then, um, and then a good diaper pail. I use the Ubi, U-B-B-I. It's a stainless steel pail, which doesn't have odor. You know, the um, the diaper genies are nice, but because they're plastic, you still can smell the pampers. The, U, the um, Ubi, you can't. So it's U-B-B-I. It's a diaper pail, and it's so nice. It's stainless steel. You don't have, you don't, I don't smell it at all, and it is great. So that's something that you want to look into, like getting, because it's really, really good. Um, so those are kind of things that are like just must-haves like 
you need a good diaper pail because you're gonna be changing diapers like for a long time. And then the older they get, the funkier they get, okay? Because they start to eat real food. Um, so yeah, those are some must have. But all the other stuff, don't stress about it. We don't even have a Junior's dresser and um, bed crib together yet. Like, cause he ain't sleeping in it. He's sleeping in his bassinet. So, my um, heater, my, my HVAC system is turning on. But he not even use that for right now. So, don't stress the small stuff. You just make sure that you keep your body healthy. You drink a lot of water right now. If you're pregnant now, you drink a lot of water and prepare your body. Um, make sure that you're not stressing out about what you need and what's on your registry, what people been buying, what they're not buying. Don't even worry about all that. Because when you see your precious bundle of joy, when you hold them, all of that is going out the You don't even worry about all that. Just saying. Make sure also that you have a good car seat. Um, track, you know, when you start getting close to like they're telling you with your ultrasounds, the size of your baby, ask them what they um, what they project your, the size of your baby will be. They're like a nine pounder, eight pounder, da, da, da. But if it's gonna be on a smaller side, you might have to get some other inserts to go into your car seat to kind of make the car seat tighter on the inside because most car seats are standard. Um, but then we actually had to get inserts to kind of go inside the car seat to make the car seat um, smaller, not so wide just so that um, our baby, you know, can fit in snug. So keep that in mind, you know, just ask your doctors as you get closer to, you know, um, doing ultrasounds where they're actually giving you the weight of the baby um, that you kind of can track what size approximately your baby might be. If they say like eight pounds, you should be good. But if they're like six, seven, you might want to get like some inserts to go inside your car seat to make it tighter and snugger. Um, a snugger fit and then a good stroller of course you want to have that um, which you probably won't be going anywhere you know real real soon but just something that a good stroller that you can just snap your car seat in and transition really well like those are all good things to have um, you have all these nice fancy fancy and expensive car seats but some of them don't transition well like it's like I don't want to have one one you know a car seat but then it won't fit with my stroller and it just doesn't transition well and, and then I gotta buy a whole nother anybody no no so find a good stroller that transitions good from your car seat that your car seat can just lock into the stroller and you can keep it moving because at the end of the day you're a mom you're gonna have so many other things going on that you don't want to be worrying about trying to get the car seat out and trying to get your baby bag and blah 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 blah. You don't want to do all that. So that's all I'm gonna say with that. Um but a lot of the other stuff just don't go overboard. Don't go overboard with buying all the knickknacks and all the stuff you see on Instagram and all the stuff you see in the stores. I'm telling you, you'll be highly disappointed and upset with yourself because you're not gonna use half of it. Just saying. <laughs> Just say you're gonna need wipes, pampers, nipple cream, a pump, <laughs> some bags to put the milk in. Like, you're gonna need those are like your necessities, but the other stuff is like some of you're not even gonna do. So, leave this video was helpful. Make sure if you have not subscribed to my channel that you go ahead and do that down below. Make sure you hit that bell so you're notified when my videos come out every week. I will see you guys next week. Bye, guys.